Good afternoon. The first item of business this afternoon is time for reflection. And our time for reflection leader today is Father Vincent Lockhart, St Monica's Parish, Coatbridge. Presiding officer and members of the Scottish Parliament, uh, good afternoon. Today marks the 400th anniversary of the death of St John Ogilvie at Glasgow Cross, an important day in the life of the Catholic community. John Ogilvie was born near Keith in Bamshire and raised in the Calvinist tradition. At the age of 17, he converted to the Roman Catholic faith while studying in Belgium. He then entered the Society of Jesus, the Jesuits, and was ordained a priest of that order in Paris in 1610. After his repeated appeals to be sent to minister to the few remaining Catholics in his native country, Ogilvy arrived in Scotland in November 1613. However, within a year, much of it spent on the run. He was captured, imprisoned, and tortured in Paisley Jail. Although Ogilvy recognised the king's temporal authority, he refused to accept his jurisdiction in spiritual matters, and for this he was tried for treason and executed on March the 10th, 1615. St John Ogilvy was, was officially proclaimed a saint of the Catholic Church by Pope Paul VI in 1976. Some 87 years prior to Ogilvy's disemboweling and hanging at Glasgow Cross, the Scottish Protestant reformer, Patrick Hamilton, was burnt at the stake as a heretic by the Catholic establishment outside St. Salvatore's Chapel in St. Andrews. Some years later, two other Protestant reformers, Walter Mill and George Wishart, met with the same fate. Hanging, disemboweling and burning at the stake are no longer used against political opponents in Scotland, as far as I'm aware. We have come a long way from Glasgow Cross and North Street in St Andrews in the past 400 years. As a nation, we still owe much to the example of these Catholic and Protestant martyrs. They were men of principle who were not swayed by popular opinion and who valued integrity over personal comfort and safety. Rather than seeing our past crimes against one another as an obstacle, our acknowledgement of them can also make us humble and more open to tolerance and dialogue. Last month saw the warm and cordial meeting of the Right Reverend John Chalmers, moderator of the Church of Scotland, and His Holiness Pope Francis in the Vatican. In his speech, Pope Francis said, we are pilgrims and we journey alongside one another. Let us be grateful for one another and for the fact that we now live and journey together in peace. Thank you. Thank you.